Hello everyone. This is my solar power system after six months of operation. It has generated about 2000 kilowatt hours of electricity and some components are no longer suitable. Today, I will upgrade one of those components, a boost converter that steps up from 52 volts to 350 volts. My old circuit had a capacity of only three kilowatts and often overloaded. I will replace it with a new boost circuit with a four kilowatt capacity and higher efficiency. The maximum efficiency I measured reached up to 96%. Moreover, with my new design, I believe the system will perform much better than the old one. I'm sharing this entire project with you. You can download the files below the video description and place an order on the JLCPCB website. JLCPCB manufactures PCBs very quickly and at a very affordable price. They are currently running a Black Friday discount promotion. Since this project involves a fairly large PCB, take advantage of this opportunity and place your order now to get the best price. It will take about a week to receive the PCB. If you want it faster, use DHL shipping. However, the cost is significantly higher. The PCB looks great. This boost converter is designed very differently from previous versions. Here, I use an H-bridge structure, which requires twice as many MOSFETs and makes the control circuit significantly more complex. However, it offers several advantages over the push-pull structure. High voltage MOSFETs are not needed, only a single transformer is required, and the efficiency is higher than that of the push-pull structure. Through-hole components are always more stable and durable than surface mount components. This is especially true for circuits that need to operate 24-7, like the circuit in this project. Therefore, I use mostly through-hole components. These are the gate resistors and discharge diodes for the MOSFETs. The diodes help the MOSFETs turn off faster. Additionally, to simplify the design, I use a gate drive transformer to replace a dedicated driver IC. Although the waveform is not perfect, it is still acceptable. I used 24 MOSFETs rated at 140 amps for this project. When running at full load of 4,000 watts, the current reaches 80 amps, and each MOSFET only handles about 15 amps. Therefore, the MOSFETs stay relatively cool during operation.
Capacitors are also very important in this project. If you use low quality capacitors, they will quickly overheat when operating at high power. I often use salvaged capacitors as they tend to have very good quality. I designed four fuses for this circuit. When running at 24 volts, you should install all four fuses rated at 50 amps. However, when running at 48 volts, only two fuses rated at 50 amps are needed. Fuses are a cost-effective and very reliable protection method. At maximum power, the current flowing through the PCB can reach up to 80 amps. So I will solder an additional copper strip onto the power trace. The backside of the PCB will also need a 2 mm copper wire to ensure stable operation of the circuit. The transformer for this project is also quite special. I used two amorphous transformer cores that are glued together. Each small transformer can generate up to 3.5 kilowatts of power. Additionally, the primary winding uses Litz wire with a cross-sectional area of up to 10 millimeter squares. The Litz wire helps reduce the skin effect, which is an undesirable phenomenon when operating at high frequencies. This transformer has three primary windings and 21 secondary windings. The secondary uses 1.5 mm squared copper wire. The transformer is directly connected to two aluminum heat sinks using screws. You will also need two 6 mm diameter cooling fans for this project. The fans will activate when the temperature of the aluminum heat sinks exceeds 45 degrees Celsius. It is recommended to configure the fans to exhaust air rather than blow air in. This will help reduce dust accumulation inside the system. Finally, I replaced the old boost converter with the new one. Currently, all parameters are normal. I will report the results after a few days of operation. For now, the overall efficiency has increased from 85% to 90%, which is excellent.